Welcome to the AWS Report, I'm Jeff Barr. Today, co-host Lee Zen speaks to the AWS identity team and then hits the streets to find out the truth about OAuth. I interview CTO of Simplified, Darren Platt, to learn about identity and single sign-on. So tell me what you did for Simplified. I'm Simplified CTO and one of the founders. Been working on building out identity as a service for approaching seven years now. Your website says you guys are an identity service provider. So what does it actually mean? Right. So it, it means different things depending on what the organization that's our customer needs, right? So in, in most cases, it means that we're providing infrastructure that enables an enterprise to control where their users are going on the web and how they're using their web applications. And then provide an audit trail so the enterprise can go back and figure out what their users did on those apps. So I know you were one of the fathers of something that was originally called AuthXML. Yes. Now, has that really evolved into what we now call OAuth? Really, What's it I, like to kind of see that happen? I wouldn't say it's part of OAuth. I think it was more of a, a part of SAML. Um, you know, our customers w were asking us, we were a web access management vendor, we'd solve the problem of single sign-on within the enterprise, and our customers wanted single sign-on to business partners, um, often in a vertical supply chain integration scenario. Uh, so we realized that uh, the approach taken by first generation web access management systems just wouldn't apply. You wouldn't be able to take an agent from your system and run it on your partner's web servers in order to get single sign on to your partners. And it became apparent that a standard was required. So we brought together a group of partners, other web access management vendors and customers. Um, some customers were called application service providers at the time. Today they're called software as a service. But they said they had this problem as well. Um, and so we came together and created a standard way for one web access management system to tell another one that a user had logged in. We made an interesting jump just now. We went from identity, basically who you are, to single sign-on of using that identity. Where is the line or is it blurred or how does it fit together? It, it depends on the end user convenience that's required and the level of security that's required. Uh, ultimately, and, and the number of applications end users are, are accessing. If you end up having to manage usernames and passwords for more than a dozen applications, you end up doing some things that aren't the most secure, or pet, you don't enforce the best password hygiene, right? You end up doing things like writing passwords down and putting them under your mouse pad or using a common password across a bunch of different applications, all bad things from a security point of view. Let's kind of step forward in the future now. So how does this actually connect up to the cloud and what does it mean for the cloud? What this means for the cloud is the cloud is a natural use case for federation. Because what the cloud or the software as a service portion of the cloud is fundamentally about is a third party providing applications to your users, um, feder federation technology applies because you want to integrate your identity capabilities with that of the service provider so that you have that convenience for your end user and you have that auditability of what they've done. Stay tuned for part two of this interview. For another perspective on identity, let's check in with Lee. Thanks so much, Jeff. I just want to sneak in one more thing about identity. Brian, I, I actually have Brian Cutler from Identity here, and we're Hi. going to talk about identity with AWS. Let's, let's get in the elevator. Let's, let's go talk about this. So tell me a little bit about what Identity Services is at AWS. So Identity Services is the team that does all the authentication and the authorization for all AWS requests. So when you make an S3 call or an EC2 call, we check the signature on that, and then also make sure that the IM user who made the call is allowed to do that. Great, and so you mentioned auth authorization, you mentioned authentication. What's the difference between those two things? Well, authentication is all about who you are. It's about checking the signature that you've made on the request with your secret keys, whereas authorization is about the permissions that you've been given. Well, thanks so much for your time, Brian. This is great. And now back to you, Jeff, with the second part of the interview with Darren Platt from Simplified. What is your offering and how does it relate to AWS? Uh, our offering is named Simplified and we provide a single, single sign-on and application management service. There are a variety of ways that we work with AWS. The first is that our customers are often deploying applications on the AWS platform, and they're wanting single sign-on for their employees or their customers from those applications, those newer applications deployed within the AWS to the ones they have on site or maybe other third-party applications. We also use it as our own deployment and production infrastructure. So within Amazon Web Services, we will deploy our runtime components for our customers who want a completely cloud-based offering. Let's say I'm an ISV, I've got an app running on AWS, and I want all these cool things you told me about. What's the integration process? What do I need to do to get it all working together? 
We have a variety of ways of integrating with an application. Our background is in first generation web access management and, and the, the requirement there was really to provide a, a bunch of different ways that application developers can interact with identity services. And, and really the idea is that an application developer should be just that, right? Application functionality code and should be able to be wrapped in identity and security and just have that identity information passed to them rather than ha requiring them to maintain that session management code themselves. What kind of customers are finding this useful? We have customers across a few different verticals. I would say the ones that are more regulated and the ones that uh, are more um, concerned about risk management are, are better customers. So verticals like the healthcare and, and life sciences verticals, financial services vertical, um, they particularly like our solution because we're able to provide an audit trail of all of the activity their end users are performing. And to wrap up, where do you see this going in the next couple of years? I, as I mentioned, I think there'll be some convergence um, on both the consumer and the enterprise side. And uh, our enterprises, our ability, the, our login that allows us to access our enterprise resources will allow us to access all of the applications that we need to use on behalf of our company that we work for. Um, and then um, again, on the consumer side, there'll be some consolidation too, and you'll be able to use your, your um, social identity to access services you do as an individual. I really appreciate you taking the time to come by and speak with us today. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, we're shooting a segment for the AWS Report to find out if people know what various technology terms are. What's your name? Hi, my name's Mark. Hi, Mark. And uh, can you tell us what OAuth is? I believe that's a male enhancing drug. Do you know what OAuth is? Uh, it sounds like some magical land that you, I don't know, that like fairies go to. <laughs> do you know what OAuth is? And if you don't, what do you think it is? OAuth? Uh, I have no idea what that is. And if I thought OAuth, I don't know. I have no idea. Can you spell it? O-A-U-T-H. OAuth. O-A-U-T-H. I don't really know, I'm sorry. What do you think OAuth is? Hey Harvo, do you know what OAuth is? OAuth, yes, uh, open authorization. So basically a uh, mechanism to use resources on, uh, across different websites with a single token. So you only have to sign in once. Thanks for watching AWS Report, I'm Jeff Barr. You can follow me on Twitter or read the AWS blog.